，小平一直认为无产阶级专政不能丢，政治体制改革是行政机构的改革，本质还是要高度集权，这样才能保持高效率。苏联出兵阿富汗，党内一次会就拍板了，这是我们的优势。美国三权分立，谁说了算？干不成事情，我们绝对不能有一点西方议会的影子。李锐。摘自李锐口述往事。李南央状告海关案，跟进报道九十五，以人为镜，可以明得失。在整理制作电子版李锐口述往事时，我将父亲的这本口述从头到尾又捋了一遍，感慨万千。父亲的一生与美国这个国家可以说有着不解之缘。他寻找、追随中国共产党，既起源于从美国年展而来的宣传。记得在一九三六年上半年，我收到一份从美国转寄给五大学生救国会的共产党的八一宣言，是用一种很薄的打字纸打印的。现在记不清楚这份宣言当时如何利用的，好像翻印过。从房门缝塞到一些同学的寝室内。读过从上海传来的斯诺写的《西北印象记》《西行漫记》的结义本后，更加坚定了我们寻找共产党的决心了。他在延安解放日报社工作时，报纸的副总编余光生是从美国共产党员转为中国共产党员的。副主编余光生，交通大学电机系毕业的。1928年到美国密歇根大学读铁路、公路建设硕士， 1 9 3 2年加入美国共产党，后来也到《救国时报》去了。39年回国，解放后担任过铁道部副部长，丁关根做过他的秘书。1952年10月，父亲从湖南省委宣传部长任，调北京中央政府燃料工业部水利发电工程局任局长。他拜的第一个专业老师陆清侃先生是从美国科罗拉多大学获得硕士学位的。我一路跟陆清侃坐火车住宾馆，让他给我上课，讲水电的基本常识，特别是讲他在美国的经验，他所经历的事情。1979年，历经二十年的放逐、监禁、平反复出后的父亲，随康什恩领队的中国能源代表团出访巴西、美国。第一次亲眼见到那个对他影响不可谓不深的国度。我对水电能源的反思，就是从1979年的巴西、美国之行开始的。懂得了人家在一个世纪里面为什么开发的那么好，就是人家确确实实是从价值规律来的。人家是股份制，火电的股票不稳定，因为它会随煤的价格波动。但水电没有这个因素，因此股值稳定。前面讲了，它的估值还高于火电，大家都愿意买。而我们搞经济不是这样，不同来源的电混在电网里吃大锅饭，水电的优势发挥不出来。应该讲，他们那里看不到什么失败的东西，人家是真正按市场经济的规律办事。所以到美国一看，我的整个思想就完全通了。科学与民主确实是人类社会进步的普世规律。另一个感触很深的事情是，在美国，人与人之间互相是非常尊重的、平等的，没有我们这种上下高低的概念，尊卑长幼没有那么厉害。到巴西、美国的那次考察，应该说是大开了眼界，不仅仅是看了他们的水电事业，而是从整个资本主义的经济也好、建设也好、社会文明的程度也好。都有了一个初步的、全方位的了解。这次出访，应当讲，对于我们自己一贯自诩的社会主义的优越性，在我脑子里面是没有了。不单是水电，而是从整个的社会生活和制度来讲，人家的资本主义更符合人类发展的规律。父亲在他的口述中，对邓小平坚持的中国政治体制进行了彻底的反思。在我们这个体制内，人决定一切。有得力的人，事情就办得好一些；人不行，事情就办不好。小平一直认为
，无产阶级专政不能丢，政治体制改革是行政机构的改革，本质还是要高度集权，这样才能保持高效率。苏联出兵阿富汗，党内一次会就拍板了，这是我们的优势。美国三权分立，谁说了算？干不成事情，我们绝对不能有一点西方议会的影子。我是一九九一年六月来到美国的，在奥巴马第二次当选之前，我不大关注美国的政治，觉得这个国家总归是在宪法框定的制度下运作的，民主党也好，共和党也好，无非是左边晃晃，右边晃晃，摇摇摆摆的，缓慢的行进在正确的道路上。二零一六年川普当选总统后，美国的精英们、媒体们、政客们几乎是同声一气的逢川必反。让我觉得美国有点不对劲儿了。二零二一年拜登政府执政后，美国更是变得越来越像人决定一切的中国，价值规律被国家政策取代，三权分立几近不复存在，立法、执法、行政都是一个腔调，与执政党不同声就是国家的敌人，需统统送进监狱。这种变化俯拾皆是，仅说能源，总统拜登一道行政令。一天之内就能将正在建设的拱新石输油管道砍掉，国家的能源转而由政府推行的绿色能源政策主宰，搞得中产阶级，特别是中产以下的国民苦不堪言。我家的车保险、房屋财产保险、汽油、食品、日常用品加在一起，哪里是政府宣布的 8.5% 的通货膨胀能够打住的？毫不夸张，每月必不可少的日常消费暴增了一千多美元。与此同时，据说加州政府还要加税。再说司法，现任总统儿子明摆着的犯罪，调查不了，审不下来；希拉里选举团队明摆着的造谣欺诈，调查了却判不了。而2020年1月6日，数百无辜民众被关押在大牢里，不得保释。纽约州总检察长对猖獗的犯罪不闻不问，却对川普家族先定罪后取证的死缠烂打。新任命的女性大法官不知道什么是女人，不知道生命起于何时。最高法院裁决讨论稿泄露近一个月，查不出是谁干的。立法的众议院议长可以将一个小小发廊的店主挤兑的放弃生意，远走他乡。无冕之王的媒体异口同声，把将亨特的电脑交给 FBI 的修理铺小老板，生生说成是与俄罗斯人勾结构陷拜登。当年，美国的左派们将他们推崇的中国共产党的理想，先出口到西方，又反销回中国，蛊惑了一大批中国知识青年投入到共产党的怀抱。历经几十年的耕耘，他们的共产主义思想开始在美国本土大放异彩。父亲李锐生前将他的日记、会议记录、信件等，八十年近千万字的资料捐献给胡佛档案馆。本意是希望这些资料不会被中国共产党毁掉，而成为研究中国近现代史的社会公器。他从未想过，这些隐现他个人一生之路的史料，会成为美国人的一面镜子。以人为镜，可以明得失。李锐保存在胡佛档案馆的资料，实实在在是这句中国古训的实例。我真的希望研究中国问题的学者精英们，能以李锐的一生为镜。明了美国正在发生什么。二零二二年五月三十一日，李南央 sues Chinese customs. Follow up ninety five. Taking people as a mirror, one can learn what is right and what is wrong. When arranging and making the electronic version of Li Rui oral history, I read through my father's life one more time. And had thousands sought. His life in the United States can be said to have an insoluble bound. Indeed, his search for and following the Chinese Communist Party (CCP) originated from the propaganda disseminated from the United States. I remember that in the first half of 1936, I received a copy of the CCP's. August One Manifesto, which was forwarded from the United States to Wuhan University students, saving the nation organization. It was printed with very thin typing paper. 
I could not recall clearly how to utilize the manifesto at the time. It seems that we made copies and inserted from the door gap into the dormitory of some classmates. After reading Impressions of the Northwest, a short extract translation of Red Star over China, that was mailed from Shanghai and written by Snow, our determination to find the CCP has become stronger. When my father was working in Yan'an Liberation Daily, the newspaper's deputy editor-in-chief, Yu Guangsheng, used to be a member of the American Communist Party and then turned into a member of the CCP. Deputy Chief in Ch Editor-in-Chief Yu Guangsheng graduated from the Department of Electronic Engineering of Jiao Tong University. In 1928, he went to University of Michigan to study for a master degree in railway and highway construction. In 1932, he joined the American Communist Party there. In October 1952, my father, as the Ministry of Minister of Propaganda Ministry of Hunan Provincial CCP Committee, to be transferred to Hydropower Engineering Bureau of the Ministry of Fuel Industry of the Central Government. Beijing, and was appointed as the secretary of the bureau. Mr. Lu Qingkan, whom my father took as his first professional teacher, was graduated from American University of Colorado and obtained his master's degree there. On a business trip, when we took the train and stay at a hotel, all the way, I asked Lu Qingkan to teach me the basics of hydropower especially his experience in the United States and the things he lived there. In 1978, in 1979, after 20 years of exile and imprisonment, my father was rehabilitated. Shortly after, he visited Brazil and the United States with the Chinese energy delegation led by Kang shi -en. For the first time, he saw the country that had a profound influence on him. My rethink on hydropower energy started from the trip to Brazil and the United States in 1979. It made me understand why they had developed so well in the century, and they really followed the law of value. Their market shares of coal power and hydropower are controlled by the price. Because of hydropower is much cheaper than coal power, therefore the former one occupies more market shares. But our economy is not like this. We put all kinds of power in the big socialist pot. The advantage of hydropower, of course, can never be played out. It should be said that I didn't see any failure there, and they really act according to the law of the market economy. Therefore, when I saw by my own eye in the United States, my whole thought was completely clear. Science and democracy are indeed the universal laws of the progress of human society. Another deeply touching thing is that in the United States, people are very respectful and equal to each other, without our concept of superior, inferior, high and low, noble, inferiority, elder and young. The visit to Brazil and the United States was eye-opening, not only to see their hydropower business, but also with all-round understanding of the entire capitalist economy, construction, and social civilization. In that visit, the superiority of socialism that we have always claimed to be was completely gone from my mind, not only in terms of hydropower, but in terms of the entire social life and system. Is American capitalism more in line with law of human development? In his oral history, my father made a thorough rethink on the political system of China that Deng Xiaoping insisted. In our system, everything is decided by person. If a person is competent, things will be done well. If he or she is an aptitude one, things will be failed. 
Deng Xiaoping has always believed that the dictatorship of proletariat can never be dropped. The reform of the political system is the reform of the administrative structure, and in sense, is still to be highly centralized in order to maintain high efficiency. When the Soviet Union departed troops to Afghanistan, the decision the decision was made in one meeting within the party. This is our advantage. The power was separated into three in the United States. Whose word counts? American way accomplished nothing. We absolutely cannot adopt Western Parliament, even a little. I came to the United States in June 1991. Before Obama was elected for the second time, I didn't pay much attention to American politics. I felt that this country always operates under the system defined by the Constitution, whether it is a Democrat or a Republican, nothing more than wobbly left or right, staggeredly and slowly, but always moves forward on the right track. After Trump was elected in 1916, in 2016, in 2016, American elites, the main media's, the politicians, always and animosely became never Trump, no matter what he did, which made me feel that something was wrong with this country. After the Biden administration took office in 2021. The United States has turned to more and more like China, where everything is decided by person. The market economy has been replaced by government policies, and the separation of powers has always ceased to exist. The powers of legislative, judicial, and executive all have the same tone. Whoever has the dissident voice, they are the enemies of the country, and all need to be sent to prison. This kind of change is everywhere. Just talking about energy, as soon as President Biden issued executive order to stop the Keystone Oil pipeline that was under destruction, it was shut down within one day, and American energy has been dominated by the government's green po- energy policy. Since then, the life of people like me, especially below the mid class, become miserable. My family's car insurance. House property insurance, gas line cost, food and daily necessities, adding all together, has skyrocketed by more than one thousand U.S. dollar per month. That is way beyond what authority announced, eighty point five percent inflation, where California government is said to be raising tax. Speaking of justice, the parent crime of the current president's son cannot be investigated. And brought to trial, the pirate deceit and conspiracy by the Hillary campaign team have been investigated but cannot be ruled. And on January six, two thousand and twenty, hundreds of hundreds of innocent people were detained in prison without bail. The New York State Attorney General turns a blind eye to the rampant crimes, but convicted the Trump family first. And then looks for evidence to match her claim. The newly appointed female justice does not know what a per- woman is and when does a life begin. The draft of a rule of Supreme Court has been leaked for nearly a month, and it is impossible to find out who did it. The Speaker of the House of Representatives made the owner of a small hair salon give up her business and move to another state. The owner of a computer repair shop handing over Hunter's hard drive to the FBI. Then he had been smeared, colluding with the Russians to frame Biden by medias. Back to my father, was young. Back to when my father was young, the American leftist deluded a large number of Chinese-educated youths into the arms of the CCP with CCP ideology propaganda. After decades of hard work, their ideas began to shine on American soil. My father Li Rui donated his diary, 
meeting minutes, letters, etc. Nearly 10 million words of materials for 80 years to the Hoover Institute. His original intention was to hope that these materials would not be destroyed by the CCP and become available to the public to study of recent Chinese history. He never saw that these historical materials, which reflected the parts of his personal life, might become a mirror for Americans. Taking people as a mirror, one can learn what is right and what is wrong. Li Rui material preserved in the Hoover is indeed an example of this ancient Chinese proverb. I really hope that elite scholars who study China issues can use Li Rui's life as a mirror to understand what is going on in the United States. May 31st, 2022